Hello and welcome to this lecture, where you are going to continue understanding multilayer neural networks, and the focus will finally be on how to adjust the ways using back propagation. Let's quickly review the whole process. We started by initializing a random set of weights, then we calculated the outputs for each instance, which is the final output of the neural network, and then we calculated the error. The next step is to calculate the new weights, and we haven't done it yet. To perform this calculation, we saw several theoretical concepts, such as the gradient descent, the calculation of the partial derivative, and the calculation of the delta parameter. Now let's focus on back propagation, which is the algorithm that will update the weights. So far, we have worked with the feed forward process, starting at the input layer, going through the hidden layer, and ending at the output layer, from left to right. The backpropagation algorithm will update the weights of each one of these connections. First, we change the weights from the hidden layer to the output layer, and then we change the weights from the input layer to the hidden layer. This algorithm has this name because it does the reverse process. It will propagate the weights from the output layer to the input layer, from right to left. The equation is quite simple. Weight n plus 1, this is the new weight that will be calculated, it will be equal to the current weight times momentum. This is an additional parameter that is used to speed up the learning process. Plus the input times the delta we calculated before times the learning rate. Just a reminder again, the delta is the calculation that we implemented before. And now it will be easier to understand a very important concept that we saw before. The gradient will indicate the direction of the weights update. Instead of going to the local minimum, the weights will go to the global minimum. This part of the equation, input times delta, corresponds to the gradient. This is one of the most important parts of the equation, which is the partial derivative of the cost or the error in relation to the weight we are working with. Regarding the learning rate, it is defined by the user. When you create a neural network, you must specify it, and it defines the speed of the algorithm to reach the global minimum. In general, the value is 0 0.001, 0 0.0001, and so on. It is a very small value. Now let's see the calculations step by step. See that we are considering all the rows of the data set in the same image. 0 and 0, 0 and 1, 1 and 0, 1 and 1. And we are considering only the first neuron of the hidden layer. You can also see the delta output for each one of the rows. Now we need to apply the equation, and to be easier to understand, in this first step, we will calculate only this part in bold, input times delta, and after we will put all together. Now we can see the equation, input 0 0.5, 
this is the result of the sigmoid function times the delta output minus 0 0.098 plus the second input 0 0.589 times the corresponding delta plus 0 0.396 times the corresponding delta plus 0 0.484 times the corresponding delta. The result is 0 0.032. This is the input times delta. Now, we need to move on to the next neuron of the hidden layer, the second one. You can see the result here. The input or the value of the activation times the delta output. The result is 0 0.022. And finally, we move on to the third neuron of the hidden layer and apply the same equation. The result is 0 0.021. And just a reminder, if you want to see the values in detail, I encourage you to pause the video and check them. Now we will move on to the last part. See that we are dealing with the weights from the hidden layer to the output layer. These are the current weights. And now we need to apply this equation. We can consider the learning rate for this example 0.3 the momentum equals 1, and input times delta, the values we got in the previous slides. Now it's quite easy, we just apply the equation. The current weight minus 0.017 times the momentum plus the input times delta 0.032 multiplied by the learning rate. The result is minus 0.007. This is the current weight, and after running all the calculations, this number here will be changed to this new one. It is the new weight. Regarding the second one, minus 0.893 times the momentum, 1, plus input times delta multiplied by the learning rate. We can see the difference, minus 0 0.886. The weight has been changed. Now we can apply the equation for the last weight. 0 0.148 times momentum plus 0 0.028 this is the input times delta multiplied by the learning rate. The new weight is 0 0.154. So, we just change the weights from the hidden layer to the output layer. This is the step-by-step -step calculation. Now that the weights from the hidden layer to the output layer has been already changed, we need to change from the input layer to the hidden layer. We can see all the rows 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, and 1, 1. And again, we are considering only the first neuron of the hidden layer. And we need to apply the same equation. And just to be easier to follow the calculations, first, we will calculate input times delta. We can see here the multiplication. Input times delta plus input times delta plus input times delta plus input times delta. See that the value is a negative number, and I'm putting here only three decimals. Now we need to perform the same calculations considering the second input. Input times delta, as we can see here, plus input times delta 
this part here, plus inputs times delta here, and finally, inputs times delta. The result, again, is a negative number. And just to emphasize, these values are rounded. Now we need to move on to the second neuron of the hidden layer and apply the same calculations. We can see the results for the first inputs and for the second inputs. And finally, we move on to the last neuron of the hidden layer and we perform the same calculations, 0.001 and 0.002. And if you want to see these values in detail, I encourage you to pause the video. Now let's move on to the last step. We can see here the current weights, the equation that we need to apply, and the parameters. Learning rate, 0.3. Momentum 1 and the input times delta matrix. Let's apply the equation for the first weight. The current weight times the momentum plus input times delta minus 000, 000 times 03. See that the result is the same. So it can happen that after running all the calculations, the weight will keep the same as before. Regarding this weight here, current weight times momentum plus input times delta multiplied by the learning rate, and the weight is the same, 0.358. Let's move on to the next one regarding the second neuron of the hidden layer. The weight times momentum plus input times delta multiplied by the learning rate, see that there is a small change. The current weight is 740, and the new weight is 743. Regarding the next weight, we can see the current and the updated weight. There is a small change here, and finally, Regarding the third neuron of the hidden layer, we can see that there is no change regarding the first weight, and there is a small change regarding the second weight. And finally, here you can see the update weights. This is the whole process of adjusting the weights using multilayer neural networks. And you need to define the number of epochs that you are going to perform these calculations. For example, if the number of epochs is equal to 100, all these calculations will be performed 100 times. After the weight update, you keep executing the whole process since the beginning, starting by the feed-forward process, calculating from the input layer to the output layer, and then from the output layer to the input layer to adjust the weights. And you stop executing all the calculations when you are satisfied with the value of the error, or in other words, when the error is small. In the next lecture, you will learn some more important concepts about neural networks. See you there!